Hi, I'm Scott Noon. I'm the CEO of Audio Advice. Today, I'm going to share with you how we converted an upstairs bonus room into a unique theater space. What made this project so much fun is how many challenges we faced since this was a total retrofit in an existing space and home. I bet many people who watch this video will relate to wanting a great theater in your own home, but every time you think about where to put it, you just run into too many issues. So we're gonna show you the entire process from start to finish, including a full time lapse of the transformation of the room and how we addressed each challenge. For those of you who already subscribed to our channel, you know I like to show something new in every video. In this video, you'll see how we addressed acoustic challenges of the room, installed a star ceiling, and we'll end with our binaural microphone demo to see how it came out. Now, let's get started. Okay, so let's go take a look at the room before any work has started. If you come on in here, what you'll see is what this room looked like when the homeowner literally just purchased the home. So uh, these plates were already here and some wiring that's already here. But what we need to do is turn this into a real great theater. So we're gonna rewire it to have the wiring with in-wall speakers at ear level here, playing straight to the main listening position. And we're gonna suspend a screen in front of it so we can do the JBL in walls and then we're going to have the uh, all the components in a cabinet below here. Now let's take a look over here. One of the challenges you've got in a room and many of you may have this in your own rooms. We've got windows all on the side and there's two challenges with windows. One is acoustic because you can hear from the road outside and the other is light control. So we're actually going to do drapes that completely cover up each of these three windows. And then if you look here, we actually have a couch that's sitting in approximately the position that the main seats will be in once this is installed. And this is a great thing to do if you're doing a theater on your own. You'll see if you use our free home theater tool where we designed this and we mapped out all the speakers that this is now sitting exactly where the couch should sit and the tool actually tells you where it will be. So we know this is what it's gonna look like. So when the designer and the homeowners come through and look at the room, they'll know this is where the seats are gonna be. Now, if we look back, the theater tool will also show you exactly where the front speakers will go as well as the rears from here. Instead of doing sides because of where these windows are and those doors, we're gonna use SCL7s, which is a diagonal speaker that will aim a little bit inward to cross all of the seats in the back here. And then we're gonna do Atmos up here. The fan will come out, a star ceiling in the middle, and this thing will be pretty cool. You'll see the vision of the transformation in our 3D render of the final room. These three-dimensional renders are most helpful for our DIY customers who are using our online design team and installing the system themselves or with their their local contractor, but they can also be helpful for visualizing what the final room will look like. Now, let's shift gears and see the time lapse of the installation.
Okay, so let's check out the final room after it's been totally transformed. What we're gonna do is start with the screen and the projector. So this is a 138 inch diagonal CinemaScope screen that's acoustically transparent by Stewart Film Screen. One of the goals the homeowner had for this room is that they really wanted a bright, strong picture that you would typically find on a television more than in most theaters. So this is a 1.3 gain screen, which brings back a lot of light back to the key seats, and it's paired up with an Epson 4050 projector. Now, Epson is known for having really high lumen capability for the money. So it has 2,400 lumens, and when you max it up with a 1.3 gain screen, the room really pops and the picture looks terrific. Okay, let's shift gears and talk about the audio side of things. The front three speakers are JBL Synthesis SCL6s. The SCL6s have four, five and a quarter inch woofers, but what really makes them sing is JBL's patented one inch compression drivers mated with a high definition imaging horn. These have two major advantages over traditional speakers. The first is that these speakers have tremendous dynamics. Because compression drivers have force behind them, they're incredibly efficient and can go from the tiny sound of a pin drop to the powerful blast of an explosion in an instant. The second advantage is that the compression drivers are behind waveguides that control the dispersion into the room. So the SEL6s are on access speakers, so the waveguide sends the sound straight forward, enabling consistent, smooth frequency response across all four of the seats in this theater. So with the French doors you see sitting over on this side, plus if you come over here, you'll remember we've got the windows back over here. The JBL SCL6s with the controlled dispersion really helped us control the sound in this room and provide good even distribution even before we started calibration. Okay, so now let's take a look at the rears here. You'll see that we've got the JBL Synthesis SCL7s back here. The SCL7s have the same woofers. There's two five and a quarter inch woofers plus the one inch compression driver playing forward. Now what makes these different from the sixes primarily is that these are off axis, meaning they focus in at a 15 degree angle and they have a 90 degree spread here. What makes that really cool is in situations like this where you don't have sides and so you want to move your rears quite wide to create dispersion in the room in here, but it minimizes bouncing off the wall and fully covers the seats. So for those of you who subscribe to the channel, you know I like to cover something new in each video. So I'm going to pause here for a second and talk a little bit about um, how you might think about situations where you don't have space for sides, or maybe you don't have space for rears, and then what do you do? So I'm gonna just walk you conceptually through it. Ideally, what you want to do is try and create as much 360 degree dispersion as you can in a room. So when you're sitting in a seat, the speakers are as much around you as possible. So if you go to the Dolby spec, what you'll see is that when you look at rears, rears can be between a 60 degree angle back or a 90 degree angle, but how do you know which one? Should you be at 60 degrees or 90? And the answer is you wanna think about surrounding yourself with speakers. So in this particular case, if we've got no sides, we want the rears to be wide to get more uh, dispersion around us with the speakers. If it were the reverse, for instance, and you had no rears because there's no back to the room, you might want to bring your sides back further. Now, the good news in this case is we actually have created all of this in the free home theater design tool at audioadvice.com. So if you're new to this, or you're trying to design your theater and you don't want to make a mistake or do some math wrong, the easiest way to do it is just go there, put in all your dimensions, put in the speakers you've got, and then you will see it will actually modify it and put them where they should be based upon what the capabilities are in your room. Okay, so now let's switch over and look at the Atmos speakers. We actually hid the Atmos speakers here in this star ceiling, so you can't see them right now, but they're JBL SCL8s. They have the same five and a quarter inch woofer and one inch compression driver as the other speakers in the room. They play at a 45 degree angle, so we've got them in front of the seats and they've got a 60 degree spread hitting it, so it completely covers all four of these seats as well as the director seats here in the back. All of these speakers are powered by an Integra 5.4 surround sound receiver. The Integra has 120 watts per channel of really good power. When you combine this power with the high efficiency of the JBL synthesis speakers, you get incredible dynamics from this system. Okay, so now that we've got smooth, consistent response across everything in the room, we need to focus on the base side of things. Given the dimensions of this room, it was best to do two subwoofers. So we've got two SVS SB3000 subwoofers that matched up perfectly, putting them in the front left and front right. 
These subwoofers have 800 watts of RMS power, 2500 peak with a high excursion 13 inch woofer. Now, in a future video, I'm gonna talk about the difference between RMS and peak power and really walk through how you should think about that. But suffice it to say, these two subwoofers provide plenty of slam and bass in this room. Now, let's talk about another challenge in this room, which is that the room dimensions are not naturally good for audio. In addition to having the big windows on the side, if you look at the dimensions, which is 18 feet deep, 16 feet wide, and nine feet high, the depth is exactly double the ceiling height, and the width is almost equal to the depth. If you were designing a perfect room, you would avoid dimensions that are multiples of each other or that have the same length and width because of the way that sounds bounce around the room and certain frequencies are canceled or multiplied. If you're designing a room from scratch and you want to learn more about this, check out the video I did on home theater design best practices, which is linked in the description. That video covers room dimensions and all the major topics for designing a theater. Many of you will find yourself in a situation like this where the room is not optimal. Yes, we could have created a fake wall and shortened the room, but then it would have tightened the space and made the length and width even closer. So we had to employ a host of techniques that collectively led to a great outcome. The first thing we did was to use the JBL Synthesis SEL speakers that give us great dispersion control. Okay, so the second thing we did was to employ using two subwoofers versus one. In general, if you want to get good bass distribution across multiple seats, you'd rather have more subwoofers. So in this particular case, it worked out well to have one in the front left and one in the front right. We then phase and time aligned the subwoofers with everything else in the room and actually ended up with a pretty good bass curve even despite having challenging dimensions of the room. Now, if you want to learn more about how many subs you should do or how to set them up or where to place them, check out the link in the description where I actually have a video where I talk about going through all of that. Okay, so the next thing we did was try to use good acoustic treatment principles. So starting with really heavy, thick carpet on the floor, big, thick drapes covering up all the windows here. Then if you shift back here, you'll see we've got the Revolution Home Theater Seating, which is by far our number one selling home theater seats in the nation. But they're great at absorbing energy as well in here. If you look at the star ceiling, this is one big acoustic panel that's hitting at the first reflections, again, coming off of the ceiling. And then finally, even on the front right here, we have Vicoustics Cinema Round Absorptive Panels that catch the first reflection coming off the side speakers here. So we've basically done everything we can to set this room up for success. Okay, so the final piece of the puzzle was to use direct bass calibration, which comes with the Integra 5.4. What that does is it analyzes the response of all the speakers in the room, including the impact of the room, and then evens everything out, does a terrific job doing it. So I'd like to end all of our videos with a demo of the room. Before I tell you how I think this room performs, let's watch the famous lobby scene from The Matrix, which has been remastered in Dolby Atmos and is actually in our video on the top 10 at most movies. In particular, what I want you to notice is in a scene like this, where you've got so much electronic music and a bunch of shooting going on at the same time, it can overwhelm a system and really kill the imaging if the system's not designed well. So let's go ahead and watch and let's see what you think. I personally love this scene, the music, the graphics, and all that is going on. Hopefully you got a sense listening to the binaural mic setup, how clearly you can hear every single shot, even as fast as those shots were coming out. And every shot and movement was imaged perfectly in the room. So one of the big takeaways from this home theater installation should be that you can take a less than ideal environment and with good design, installation, and calibration, you can turn it into a great home theater room. I'd like to thank the terrific homeowners for allowing us to work with them on this project and for letting us document it in this video. As you can probably tell, we live and breathe audio and home theaters and just love bringing happiness to our customers. Whether we're installing it ourselves or helping a customer halfway across the country design and install their dream system in their home. If you're considering building a home theater or updating your own, check out our home theater page at audioadvice.com where we have our full 
free home theater design tool, how-to videos, an inspiration gallery, and everything home theater related. Or if you have any questions at all, give us a call or chat with us at audioadvice.com or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification button so you'll be notified when we roll out our newest videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.